<laughs> so here, here it is. So I'm here with George, and I, I, George came over to help me today. I really want to convey this message to everyone about what happened, because it is absolutely the Lord uh, letting us know that the watch is over, and that um, you know, 7:27, the, the time of the sunrise. The Lord told me to look that up. The time of the sunrise was 7:27 which means the snatching and taking away. Mm -hmm. And it also means Ark of the Covenant. Well, I built that container as per the Lord's instructions to represent the church that's leaving the Bride of Christ. So then the day after that, you know, um, George comes over here and we go, we go and worked on a little job we had. And then on the way back, uh, George had one of his uh, episodes, which he hasn't had very many since you got saved. What, you've had like two? Yeah, two. He's had two since he got saved. And um, so on the way back over here, just like a block from the house is when it happened. And then, you know, we told you the story on the last video where, you know, I wasn't planning on laying hands on George. I just, I was trying to comfort him, that's all, and put my hand on his neck and, you know, like, you're going to be okay. And, uh, and I was just reminding the Lord of my prayer. Like, you know, you had told me that you're going to heal him on your time schedule according to your will because in my prayer time one time I'd said Lord would you would you please take this affliction away from George and so anyway so when it was going on you know I was praying and I had my hand on the back of his neck and I was just reminding the Lord hey you know would you make this easy and don't let him suffer and, and those kind of things and I, I reminded the Lord of my prayer and that's when um I looked over and Instead of being passed out, George was looking at me like, <laughs> right? Yep. Yes. yes. Freaked. <laughs> I mean, I, it was weird. It was, yeah. right? it was very weird. weird. I was, you know, because I'm driving, I still got one hand on, on the steering wheel, and I, I got the other hand over there on George, and, you know, and then I get this jolt through my body. I don't Did you see the jolt? Yeah. The jolt was... It was crazy. It was like a flag that went wop, pop, you know, just pop. And it went through one arm and out the other. And I was like, ah. <laughs> it was like, it was crazy. I mean, it, it was exhausting. That's a good way to put it. And so then that happened. And then I look over at George and I'm still driving home. And I still have to, you know, make, you know, a little bit of distance to get home. Like a block and a half, maybe a block, block and a half. But I look over at George, and instead of him being all like that, I look over and he's like, and I mean, he's looking, I'm like, and I'm thinking, what's up, dude? Like, I'm like, well, out. why are you looking at me like that? And then I realized, oh my gosh, he didn't, and then he's like, I didn't pass out and I don't feel bad. And what happened? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel no tingling, no, I mean, everything was just, automatically just gone like it was i couldn't even explain it and that's the reason that i told him this like dude i need to show you like how this feels right so that's why i ran to the back of my right, truck right right so take know, it we're gonna go act that out in just a sec so i don't want george to get too far ahead because this is why he came over today i said we've got to explain to people how this went down because they have to see it so let's just go reenact it let's do it and i said let's go show everybody the way it went down uh, because so when we pull up in the driveway, I mean we're at the house right now. We're gonna go out in the driveway, and and we're gonna we're gonna redo this, and we're just gonna show y'all what happened because it's time to shed the cocoon, folks. It's time to go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm just gonna kind of go through this thing. So George is over there, and I'm like this. I got my arm on the back of his neck, and I'm just praying and and driving. And so I ex I told George lean the seat back. So. When this happened, this has happened before, so I tell him lean the seat back so he can lift, so he can lay back there like that. And so, so I'm praying like this, and I got my hand on his neck, and I'm pulling up, and all of a sudden my body just goes up, up like that. I'm like whoa, and then and then I pull up and I look over like this at George, and George instead of being back, <laughs> he's staring at me like. <laughs> like that <laughs> like that <laughs> I was like I know and I was like I'm like what like like what yeah, exactly just like this we were looking at each other like I this. was like what and I'm like wait a minute he didn't pass out 
So then George, uh, that's why I'm like, I'm like, dude, like I'm not, I don't feel anything. It's like so weird. And then, you know, I had jumped out of the truck. I jumped out of the truck and I'm like, dude, I gotta call my wife. You know, I gotta tell my wife real right. quick. So I jumped out the truck and you were still in here freaking out. Okay, so now look, so I'm over here like this and and I had my hand and after the big like, whoa, whoa, I was like that. I looked at him and I went like this. He said, I'm gonna call my wife. I take my arm and I was like this. And I, I literally, I didn't have my head up. I was like this and I went like this and tears just started rolling out of my eyes. Yeah. And then I'm like this and I just look at him like this. I just roll my head and I'm like, I'm done, man. Yep. I got, I got nothing left in the tank. I was like, dude, I'm done. And George, so George, he gets out right over of the door, right? Yeah, I get out, I get out right here outside of the door. And I'm like, dude, I got, I, I'm, I'm gonna smoke a cigarette. I need to call my wife. I'm like, I need to call my wife, like right now. I, I'm gonna, I gotta freak her out real quick. Here, I'll hold that while you talk. So then, so then I go ahead and I step right out and I call, I start calling my wife and I'm like, you know, babe, like, you're not gonna believe what happened. Like, I just, like, I started to get sick. You know, my hands started, started to lock up, you know, and she's like, so you passed out, are you okay? I'm like, no, I didn't, I didn't pass out. It and she's away. like, she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, it went away. Like, you know, we were in the truck and, you know, it started to go down and, you know, I tell her, I'm like, you know, Johnny just reached over and he saw me, you know, I told Johnny that, it, you know, that I, that it was going down, that my hands were already locking up, that I can feel all the, the, the little ants he, in my he head. Said, he, he says it, he vocalizes, he's like... And I'm like, dude, that's it. He goes, oh, I feel all the ants, like, on my head, and I'm like, oh, here it comes. And, and I was like, yeah, it's going down. I, I turn around, I tell him that, and, you know, I, I told her, it was like, that's it. So she's, she's like, so you didn't pass out? I'm like, no, Johnny... Johnny reached over and he was just praying. Like he wasn't like trying to lay hands or nothing. He turned around, he touched my shoulder and I didn't know that that's what he was doing. Cause I'm like not over here. I was in here. So I didn't know what was going on really. But you know, he, I, I know he had his hand on my shoulder. And I know he had removed my ring. And then I was like, just, you know, I told her that, that you had removed my ring. You were praying. And then it just stopped. It was gone. Like, from locked fingers, I had even popped my finger like he, I always his do. His fingers go like this, and they look, they get real stiff, and they look all double jointed, and he, he pops them. It's just kind of, it's kind of freaky. He's yeah. like, and I'm like, ah. And usually, like my hands swell up, so my wife and well, Johnny already knows, you know, to remove my ring, cause then, yeah, that, that'll that, that'll hurt later. <laughs> yeah. So now here's the point of this video. So. This comes on the heels. This is the day after the sunrise video. You know, like the watch is over, so here's the thing. So then I'm sitting here and I'm like, literally with my head leaned back, my arms down by my side like I showed you. I didn't even have my hands on the steering wheel. I couldn't pick them up. I was exhausted. I mean like, ah. And I looked at George and I mean, I just had tears and I'm like, dude, I'm done. I got nothing left. His wife told him that that she needed the my, the truck, you know, so she can go pick up the kids from school because we had just found out she had a ball in her in her in her car, you know. So she it wasn't drivable, you know, long distance. So then, you know, I turned around and I told Johnny, you know, if there was any possible way that we can go and drop off the truck, he's like, yeah, let's go. Absolutely. So we took off. And <laughs> so here's the next part. So now I told George, uh, come back over. You know, today I, I want to show you what happened because we're getting ready to shed our suits. And our suits is our, our bodies. And because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. And so the Lord God has communicated to me in a perfect way that it's time, you know, that we're, we're going. We're going to drive back over there. I'm going to drive my truck. George is going to follow me. Okay, so I'm picking this up in the car right now. And I'm on the way to, you know, the route we were going when I ran out of gas. But now what's so crazy is this. I am literally out of gas. I'll give you a, a scripture. I know you have little strength, but you have not denied my name. Kept the word of my patience, therefore I will keep you from the hour of testing. That shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Guys, I've got nothing left in the tank. In, in me, I mean, 
I poured it out like a drink offering onto the dry parched ground. And that's what my life has been for the last 15 years. Just pouring myself out for the benefit of others. So here we go, right here. This is where my car went dead, right here. Right here, my car died, right here. And I'm like, oh no. I'm, and I look down and I'm out of gas. So I just start coasting. I put my car in neutral. And so I just start coasting this way. Now George, he came alongside me to the left. And he, I was trying to get his attention. As a matter of fact, I was calling him on the phone. But he got on the highway right there. He got on and I stayed on this access road and I just was coasting right here. And I was like, oh no, I'm gonna block all the traffic, you know, here at like four o'clock. And I'm coming up to this light and I'm like, and I looked to the right and there were no cars coming. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna coast through it. And I coasted through it and I pulled in right here. And this is it. So this is where I pulled in, exactly. Okay, so there's George pulling up, just like he pulled up. I was sitting here out of gas. George gets out. And so, so George walks around and we start talking. And we're talking about how crazy the whole experience was. And I was like, dude, that was so crazy. And then I said, George, go look at the number on this building. Did I say that? Yep. And so we walk over here. And we look at the number on the building, which is 555. And we're like, wow. And I said, the Lord said that that number is really significant to pay attention. Did I tell you that? Yep. Okay, so I come over here and then we're still talking about it. And I look up at that sign and it says, now delivering, let's see, up there. And it says 321 in front of a gate. And I'm like, wow, that is so weird. And I'm talking about the whole experience, how it drained me, how I was out of gas, my truck's out of gas. And I'm like, it's so weird. <laughs> and George goes, it was, it, like, it, I'm so freaking out. So I'm like, dude, like, I'm, that's when I started to explain to him, like, dude, there's like not even no way I can think of explaining to you. And then I'm like, you know what? Hold on real quick. That's right. So, so he I ran over here, you know, I opened the back of my truck. I pull out my coat. Yeah, he pulls out the leather, and I'm thinking, I what's he doing? I pull out my leather coat, and I put it on, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, this is this is exactly how it feels. It feels like this, just then, like that. <laughs> and so he peels it off like he's throwing it away, and and then that was later that day. I got home, and I'm like, uh, the meaning of five five five, it means to cast off like a garment. So now we're gonna post this, and we're gonna I'm gonna show you the scriptures that go with it. So it's time to go home. It's, yeah. We're going. It's coming. All right, guys. Encouragement. So anyway, I find this all so fascinating that here at this stage of the game, you know, when I've been telling everybody, hey, guys, the rapture's coming. That's what that, that's what the um, container represents is, is the church that's leaving. And by the way, folks, I've had some people ask about, you know, can can we come see it? Here's the thing. I'm so, unfortunately, my uh, my house, there's not an open invitation uh, because of security reasons. And I've had to deal with people that thought they were hearing from God and they weren't hearing from God at all. So because of those reasons, if anybody was to ever show up unannounced, it would not be received well at all. It would be received with the police and with police reports because some people have done that. And that is absolutely a complete breach of protocol so please don't do that because otherwise I'll you know I'll have to make a phone call that's it if the Lord wants to open the door I'll certainly let you know so that's the way it works uh, if he tells me to open the door then I'll do exactly what he says when he says to do it so we'll just leave it at that how's that then you'll know so the rapture's coming we're about to 555 five, five. we're about to take off like a garment and cast away just like George did I mean I don't even know how to explain how supernatural all this is I mean I wish I could let y'all all experience it you know with me and you know at the same time but the best I know how to do 
is to give you a clear testimony to it. Because if I give you a clear testimony to it, you know, that's, you know, my testimony is the same as if I was in a court of law. And so I want to encourage you um, to keep marching it out, keep going forward, and to wait on the Lord, and He will bring it to pass. I guarantee it. Now, I'm going to redo the YouTube video. The Lord told me to revisit it, and I'm telling you, the Lord had me revisit it. Brace yourselves. Bono knows exactly what I know. He's telling you New York's about to be destroyed with water. I'm going to show you some of the things that uh, on the first go round I didn't catch. So anyway, get ready, um, guys, and prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, and live these last days and hours like they're your last because they are. Here's one thing I would like to ask. There are people I would like to be able to help before the end is here. I would like y'all to please, if you can, if you're capable, I don't, I only want if you're capable, please pour out some kind of a blessing so I can leave something for others. You know, there's people that, you know, we've stepped up to help with rent, children that need help, uh, their parents need help to pay rent, pay bills, um, you know, stuff like that. And uh, also, you know, to finish off whatever accoutrements need to be done. I am preparing this house to be handed over for whatever it's supposed to be handed over for. And, um, you know, I don't know how this all ends here. I just know how it ends with the church. The church leaves. And so all the information that I've put together will be left behind in a very organized manner. I almost feel sorry for the person that shows up and gets it. And what I mean is the Lord will put here who, who he wants, when he wants, how he wants, you know, and of course that'll be his choosing. So anyway, um, it's going to be overwhelming. I mean, I get it. Can you imagine showing up at my house? I mean, if the Lord sends you there, and receiving this kind of information all in one place, that would be too much. <laughs> You'd freak out. So we'll see what happens. God's in control, and I'm going to let him be in control. But I would certainly appreciate it if here at the end, if, you know, y'all would help just help me help others and, you know, finish this off to where there's no burden whatsoever. Um, I'm getting to the point to where trying to help others is getting a little tenuous. Okay, so anyway, uh, that being said, uh, you can go to, uh, we have a PayPal link there at the YouTube channel or, you know, we have our post office box. Yeah, I wanted to close this video by, by just giving everybody a heads up. First of all, I really appreciate, uh, you know, that people write me letters and send me stuff. It's really, uh, it's awesome. Um, there's a bit of a problem though because some people have started circumventing the um, the P.O. box and some I've started getting packages at my home from Amazon uh, that other people will purchase something on Amazon and send it to me or I'll get a package at home that has no return address or it will or it won't have a legitimate return address and so if any of that stuff comes to my house, I just, I need y'all to know, don't waste your time. Please don't waste your money doing that because I have to throw it in the trash. I cannot receive any packages. If someone goes to the, you know, to the hassle to find out my address and sends me something, well, I can't be trusted. So especially without a legitimate return address or even if it comes from Amazon because I don't know. So I can't roll the dice, so it just goes into the trash can. So please don't waste your time and your money or your effort trying to send something to me personally. We have a P.O. Box, P.O. Box 91281, San Antonio, Texas 78209, and that's uh, where I receive stuff. Now here's the other thing. I know the people at the post office. I've known them for years. Uh, if anything comes in without a return address, it's flagged. It's very highly suspect. 
if it comes in without a legitimate return address or a zip code, highly suspect. So those things will be returned to the postal people because I've had some weird stuff happen, so I can't receive anything unless there's a, a legitimate return address, unless, um, you know, uh, if I've talked to somebody, like, you know, I have some friends that have said, hey, Jonathan, I would like to send you this from this location, and then I know about it, and then I'll receive it, you know, but I can't. I can't receive packages that way or letters, none of it. So anyway, please don't do it because it just ends up in the trash can. Okay, so I just want to be clear about that. But I'm glad to receive whatever you want to send me. Please make sure you don't forget your return address. Please, I mean, anyone that puts a, a non-legitimate return address, that's, watch out. Okay, so please don't do it. There started being some of that stuff going on and actually I had people that showed up at my house uninvited. That's crazy. You don't just show up at someone's house. I wouldn't show up at one of my good friend's house uninvited. So if anyone ever shows up at my house uninvited, that will be considered like a hostile arrival. It won't be greeted well. So I have to be like that. All right, thank you. God bless.